What's up everyone, Willie Apple here, and today Apple has released the first beta of macOS 15. In this video, I'll be showing you what is new inside the software. We got a lot to talk about today. Let's get started. All right, so the first one is actually a pretty cool feature. So if we were to hover over here, you see that we have new move and resize options. So we can move everything to the left right here. We can make everything full screen easier now, or we can move everything like this to fill in a range. And I'm gonna show you what fill in a range does. All right, so I have a couple of windows right here. Let me just do the keyboard shortcut. And you can see this is what fill in a range does. I just think it's a lot easier just to master the keyboard shortcuts, which is actually FN shift control right, left, up and down. And just to get it separately, you could just do FN control. And then you could just organize them however you want just by pressing FN control and the dedicated arrow key just the way you want. And along with that, we even have full window snapping inside of Mac OS Sequoia right here. So if I were to just play around with it, you could see I could snap it. It's a little bit interesting in a way right now, but you could get it into a corner snap if you want. There's just a lot of more freedom now. And inside the window right here, you could full screen or tile stuff or move and resize. And you can move everything to the bottom right, for example. So this is just a lot better window management inside of Mac OS Sequoia. Probably one of the most hype features in this update. All right, so the next thing has to do with Safari. So if I were to go to a web page right here, you see we have a brand new manager for highlights. So you can see highlights right here is basically just AI summarizing the website. So if I were to turn this on, it will try to summarize it as we go, but unfortunately it's a little bit buggy right now. And along with that, we have dedicated text size options. We have find and replace right here inside of this button. And we also have all the website settings right here as well. So before this was just the website settings and sometimes it showed the reader, but now it's just all of this booked right in here. If I were to go to an article real fast, you'll see that there's a reader option right here. So you can still get into reader right here when there's an article. It's just a lot better, I think. And there's even hiding reader and there's even reader options where you can change the font in here. And also in Safari, they kind of customize this a little bit. So we have show iCloud tabs. It's not all by default anymore. The edit button right here is no longer just a couple of sliders. It's now just a dedicated edit button. It makes a lot more sense. You could edit your background if you wanted to, you, or you could just customize everything right here, just like you were always able to do. And Safari is once again, the world's fastest browser, according to Apple. All right, the next thing has to do with the passwords app. So we have a brand new app for our passwords. So you can see that it's locked via your password or your touch ID. So let me do touch ID real fast. And inside of here where I have it blurred out, those are all the websites that you have signed up for. And in this little sidebar right here, we have all your passwords, all your passwords with pass keys, all your verification codes, all your Wi-Fi passwords, and that's passwords that you should probably change because you might use the same password sometimes and that counts it as you should change that password. And it's just a lot easier to access your passwords now. And the passwords show the app icons. I'll show you what they look like right here. Or the website icon, for example. As you can see, they sometimes show the letters if they can't pull the icon for the website, for example. But you can see right here, we got a lot of new icons in here. It looks really nice. Now, the next thing is that we have a redesigned calculator app. So as you can see right here, this calculator app has been rebuilt from the ground up to take advantage of Swift UI. It's no longer app kid, no longer looks ancient. It actually looks modern now. And something unique to macOS is we have a programmer calculator. So this is probably just to compete with Windows since I know Windows has a programmer calculator built right in but now they brought a programmer calculator to macOS and of course you can still get the scientific calculator like always. And it's just also easy to convert stuff now. So I wanted to do 50 for example convert, convert $50 to euros or I can just basically choose any other thing I want. Can't really see what it says up here. I'm sure this will change and everything. If I wanted 50 newtons to LBFs, you'll be able to do that if you want. You could even convert. So it's a little bit cool that we have an easier way to convert stuff. Before it was all in the menu bar, but now it's a lot easier to convert stuff. And we also have a new feature called Math Notes. So as you can see right here, I wrote four plus four is, is equal to, and then Apple automatically put eight and then they put it in my handwriting as well. But if I were to just go up here and just do five plus three is equal to, you'll be able to see we 
have eight. So let me just do that again. So I just gotta press enter and then it will show the eight right there. Pretty cool that it now just solves stuff. So you could probably do eight X plus two. I'm sure you're able to do this somehow. I will show this off in the keynote, but I'm not sure how it works really. Now the next thing is that we have a dedicated tips app on macOS. So before this was built into the Finder, now it's own dedicated app as you can see right here. And it's just the tips app as you would expect on iOS or macOS right here. Now next thing is that we have different widget pickers. So if I were to place a widget right here, let me do that and tap into the widget, you're gonna notice that the widget editor looks a little bit different. It looks more reminiscent to the iOS version. It has more rounded corners. And if I were to choose one, you see it comes out in a different window and now and you're able to just choose whatever one that you want so for example if i wanted wwdc 24 if i were still counting down to it it just looks more like the ios one now but this is still bringing up mac os dialogue which is probably something that we need in mac os all right, the next thing has to do with the reorganized settings app. It's not redesign, it's reorganized. And it starts up on general now instead of going into appearance for whatever reason. Appearance was probably the most random thing ever, but now it starts out on general where you have all your general options. And to be honest, I've kind of gotten used to it. It's a lot quicker to get used to it than macOS Ventura system settings app. So if you're worried about getting used to it, you really don't need to be worried too much about it. All right, so the next thing has to do with the message Messages app right here. We have a couple of changes with the messages app. So if I were to go into here, you see we have a brand new send later option. This has also been redesigned quite a bit. It looks a lot better now. And this plus button is now present on macOS, whereas before it was just the app icon, which didn't make a ton of sense, but this app icon, but this plus icon makes a lot more sense now on macOS. Now we also have some brand new effects. So I were to type gibberish right here, I could actually highlight stuff. And then you can see I can now bold it. I I can now strike through my selected text and I could also add some text effects. For example, nod it. It even shows me that it's nodding right here, which is a pretty cool thing that it does. And if I were to send it, we have a couple of brand new things here, but you see, we have a redesigned picker right here. So we have the heart, thumbs up, thumbs down, ha ha, exclamation points in question. But we also have emojis down here now. So if I were to go into the emoji picker, you can see I'm able to just choose whatever emoji I want. So if I wanted the mewing emoji, for example, you see I'm easily able to get the mewing emoji and I could just react with a mewing emoji. And as you can see right here, reactions look a lot better when they're overlapping, probably just so you could just see emojis. And the next thing has to do with the weather app. So if I were to open up the weather app, you could see now when I'm at home, it now says home up here instead of my my location, which I guess makes a little bit more sense. I guess it will just say my location. Haven't tried it out yet, but as you can see right here, it just says home now. Now the next thing is inside the maps app. If I go into here, we're apparently able to get topographic maps. I've not been able to find a location with topographic map support quite yet. So that is why I just don't know how to do it quite yet. It's not in the view right here. It's just certain national parks, but also you could save routes now. If I wanted to go to Raising Canes right here, I've just pressed this add button and it will just easily be saved. So if I were to go into here, I could just easily get to Raising Canes. Now something I've noticed with Mac OS Sequoia is that 1080p support has gotten a lot better. I'm not sure about 1440p, but the display looks a lot more crisp on 1080p now, which is actually a really good thing. So I guess macOS is finally learning what 1080p displays are. Now inside of the wallpaper or screensaver settings, we have a new wallpaper. So of course we have the macOS wallpaper as you can see right here. It's just called macOS beta right now. I'm sure they'll eventually call it Sequoia, but we also have a brand new wallpaper, which is pretty cool. It is celebrating the 40th anniversary of macOS. So as you can see right here, we have different variants. So let me show you all the different variants. So we have accents, which is the default. We have green, which it looks like that. We got yellow, we got orange, we got red, and we all have a lot more colors in here that I'm not going to go over, but it looks really cool. Personally, I like the purple one, and especially when we get into a screensaver mode, let me trigger it real fast. You can see right here, this wallpaper just transitions through classic Mac OS. It looks extremely cool. As you can see, it just fades right there and it turns to something else. For example, it turns into an illegal operation warning, for example. 
And it's just really cool that Apple's celebrating the 40th anniversary of macOS. And there are a couple other ones like the old calculator app. Thank God we got the a new calculator app, for example, but it's just really nice that we got a new one. Now, if you're wondering about a couple of things that Apple has announced for macOS Sequoia, no, the iPhone mirroring app is not in here yet. However, you can search for it. As you can see right here, it is in macOS, but when you try opening it, it just instantly fatal to errors and crashes. So it doesn't work right now. Maybe Apple just needs a little bit more time just to get it fully operational. And Apple Intelligence is not yet in macOS either. I think that's coming in the fall with a macOS update. So it's not coming in macOS 14.0, but it's probably gonna come in macOS 14.2 or 14.1, depending on the time when they release it. Now, the next thing is that we have a redesigned chessboard. So if I were to go into here you can see the chessboard has been redesigned so unfortunately it still does not show you where the pieces can go so you gotta know how to play chess in order to be able to use this app still and there's even a new circle dot down here and it's also a lot easier to move now so they just click and drag the side of the board and you're able to rotate it which is a lot better behavior inside of here before it was like hold right click and then do some gimmicky thing so at least the chess app has finally been updated here looks really nice now it looks reflective probably just to take advantage of the m1 chip for example and i know i'm bad at chess so i guess some of you might be triggering right now i apologize of my bad chess moves now next thing has to do with the music app so we got a couple of new design changes in here the first one is that this icon is now a lot more rounded same with these play and shuffle icons and if i were to hover on a song and then let go it just fades through as i do that now looks looks really nice it looks a lot more modern now than it did before Apple every year has constantly been updating the music app just to make it look a lot nicer. Now, unfortunately, despite all the new features in macOS Sequoia, we got a removal of a feature. So maybe they'll bring this back, we're not sure, but they removed the days and the weeks button up here. So it's just months and it's just years now. Unfortunately, they got rid of it, but we do have a couple of new features in the Photos app. So we have this new collection sidebar. So it just organizes everything a lot better, like all your albums are still here, but you also have days, people, memories, trips, and feature photos. So trips is a new category where it just shows you places where you've been and it gathers them up as much as it can. And the sidebar has just been reorganized quite a bit. I think this makes a lot more sense, to be honest. It's a lot easier to find the thing that you want to do in the Photos app. Now the next thing is inside of the accessibility settings. If I were to scroll down to audio right here and then go into background sounds and choose a background sound, we got two new ones, Night and Fire. They currently don't work in macOS. In fact, there's a release note. If I were to go into here, it's just completely signed for both of them. But fortunately, we gotta wait until they fix it in order to use those new sounds. Update to macOS Sequoia on your main device. I would say it is pretty smooth, so if you're, all you're looking for is for it to be smooth, go for it. However, memory usage is not really good here, so if you were concerned about memory in macOS Sonoma, it is a lot worse here in macOS. Now obviously that could be a beta thing, so we'll have to wait and see if Apple will fix memory usage inside of Sequoia. But feature-wise, we do not have iPhone mirroring, and unless you really want the snap feature, for example this one, then I would say you don't need macOS Sequoia right now. I would highly recommend dual booting and trying it out. And if you're a developer, make sure your apps work on it. But it's not a deal breaker to not have, especially the messages app where the messages effects do not show up in Sonoma. But if you would like to get your hands on macOS Sequoia anyway, you can watch my video up here on how to get it. And I'll eventually have a video showing you how you can dual boot macOS Sonoma and macOS Sequoia. So stay on the lookout for that. And thanks for watching, comment, like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Download my apps, Willy Widgets, and Study Rec down in the description down below. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.